All right, so the next one up is, yeah, this was a fight that I was uh, unironically looking forward to. And because, because you love women's MMA. I yes. love women's MMA now, apparently. <laughs> this is a new revelation in my life, and I'm rolling with it for as long as I can. Uh, so we had we had Kayla Harrison versus Holly Holm. Now, Kayla did not disappoint me. I've been bigging her up for what feels like weeks now. And she, uh, yeah, she dominated Holly submitted her in, a, in round two I'm not gonna lie when when she came into the um cage initially and she you know her face was sunken she had baggy eyes and by her mm -hmm. I mean Harrison you know I was shitting my pants I was genuinely yeah. shitting my pants at that point I think I said it on live stream where I was like uh oh like she looked fucked yeah. she literally looked she, like yeah she God, looked she rough awful. she looked rough yeah maybe a rough night mm -hmm. I, I, I don't know but you know, hindsight now is all twenty twenty. She looked fantastic. Um, and the weird thing is, I was looking at the um, I was looking at the rankings, and nobody in bantamweight has been matched up yet. No one's got fights. Yeah. Like literally, no. Like, it's like, so like, weird. It's so weird, weird how they handle in their division right now. So, I, I, I don't put it all on the women though. Yeah. It's because like yeah. you got to match them up and start to make it interesting. If you just let them hang out and you know you don't put matchups together that are interesting and test them like you're gonna keep being the worst division in mma like which i i don't think is a question like they are the worst division in mma oh it's it's not even close i mean it's it i i think men's heavyweight sucks as well but bantamweight considerably sucks considerably more yeah you know um, so look, so in considering, obviously, where Holly and Harrison are, what would you do matching them up next? <clears throat> um, so for Holly, um, Holly was the more difficult of the two just because of where she is in her career. So one thing I, you know, I meant to ask this on the stream is, you know, ask everybody if they if they think that Holly Holm is going to go into the Hall of Fame uh, when all is said and done. Um, I actually think she will um, because of what she means to the company. Um, but that being said, I do think that she's towards the end. And I think one fight that would be cool for her to get back is definitely Misha Tate. Um, I think that's a, an appropriate matchup for her, uh, for both of them. And, and actually winnable for both of them. And it would be a nice legacy send off, honestly, for both of them. It could be a Stipe John Jones situation where they're both leaving. But um, that would be a, a dope fight for her. And for Kayla, um, I think it's obvious that she's, she's ready to fight for the championship for the belt right now. Um, I know that they are trying to find something to do with Juliana Pena. And I heard that Raquel Pennington is hurt. Um, and that's why she's not able to fight until the fall or early um, winter. Um, I think if Kayla wants to wait, then that she should walk right into that championship. Um, honestly, it kind of mirrors what um, happened with Michael Chandler when he came into the organization. He fought Dan Hooker, beat him, and then walked into a championship. It's a, it's a very similar situation, except for I think Kayla has a more should be favorite. Like I think I think she should win that fight, no matter whether it's you know Rocky or if Rocky fights Juliana and whoever wins, Kayla's going to beat any any of them. So Kayla for the belt, whatever the next fight is, it should be for the belt. Yeah. Um... Again, we're kind of think we are we are thinking along similar lines. I was actually thinking that like I mean I know Dana came out after the fight and said that he thinks that um home should retire and I don't think that's an I don't think that's an awful I don't think that's an awful suggestion, but she was fighting somebody who's very good. And I mean she didn't look she you know, she 
she got dominated, but it wasn't like mm -hmm. it was all those ones that we could all see coming based on what Kayla's skill set is. And I mean, yeah. when she when she find, signed that eight fight contract, we all knew it was fucking silly. Like she was never going to finish those fights. Um, I do think she will stick about. And honestly, I, I, part of me thinks she should because there are still a lot of win winnable fights for her in the rankings as well. And I mean, she's getting paid very, very well. There's a limited mm -hmm. time in this sport. You know, it's not like she's going to get a lot of brain damage with who's left. She could probably rack off two more fights and walk out with close to a million dollars based on what her contract is. Um, so looking at the rankings um, and looking at what the most... Because she's not going to get back to a belt. No, that's over. Um, it was unlikely before this fight. I think once she got choked out by Mayra Bueno, Silva, mm -hmm. that was the end for her in terms of contending. And it's yeah. obviously we didn't know Kayla was going to be in the division then either. Um, so that's just put another nail in that coffin. So looking at the rankings, there's a few ma few matchups I could do for her. I would say Julia Ravillo, still ranked, and she got dominated by Misha. So I don't think that'd be a bad option. No, um, no, Pani, it wouldn't be. Yeah, Pani Kianzad was another one I thought of. Again, not outrageously tough matchup wise. It's, it's like I said, man, bantam rate, bantam weight's horrible. Um, and there are plenty of ranked women that she could fight that won't whoop her ass, even at her age. Like she could lose to them, but if you can, like I said, you get another 300, 400K for fighting somebody who may have beat you, but they won't, you know, a couple of sleeps and you're back to normal kind of thing. You do it, mm -hmm. you know, like I said, she's at the end, take the money. So any yeah. of those would be fine. And I, I don't mind the Misha Tate one as well. I do think she would, I'd probably favor Misha in that fight, but again, it would be a good, good one to send off on. Um, and I can only echo what you said about Harrison. She should be fighting for a title now. Um, Irene Aldana already had her shot, and she's probably the only one who I think's in the division right now that's deserving. Penny yeah. hasn't fought since 2022, and she's done nothing but complain. And let's be fair, she's shit. So she shouldn't. She shouldn't be getting <laughs> the title shot anyway. No, she shouldn't. So, be. And I think yeah, I think that with the way that the ranking thing works, I think Harrison's going to be ranked at a minimum third. Even though Holly was like fifth or sixth, I think she'll get a boost. I think she'll be ranked third because it is a popularity contest. Mm -hmm. I would say get capitalize on this now. Either get, I mean, you, we were talking off, off camera about this and there's, you know, like I said, if Pennington's not going to be fighting for a while, put her in there with Pena, just stomp, stamp her out. Get rid of Pena once and for all as a contender. Shut her up. Mm -hmm. Do that fight. And then as soon as Pennington's back, whoever... Pen Pennington's got to fight Harrison next. Nobody else is in a spot, is spot where it... This writes itself. It's got to be her. Yeah. So I'd either... If they can assure Harrison that she gets Pennington when she comes back, might as well wait. But she's she'll have no problem curb stomping Pena in the meantime, that would be a cakewalk. It's another payday. It's adding to her again. You know, because I wouldn't give a pen. I wouldn't give Pena a hope in hell in that match. No, I really no. wouldn't. She'd destroy her. So yeah, that would it be feels so like bad. no risk. It feels like no risk, and again, it adds to that legacy thing because Pena. Again, I know that Pena's awful, but she did beat Nunez. I know it was somewhat fluky to sign. It was a Nunez who obviously didn't take her seriously. But if Harrison yeah. goes in there and absolutely destroys her in a round or two, which she, I think she would. It's she probably would. Oh, you know? It's another important scout. Because, I mean, it's still a champion that she's beating. So that would be the second champion. And some people rate Pena. I mean, you've got to be, you've got to have been lobotomized to not see how bad she is. But. Yeah. She, like you said, she's a former champion. And there are some people out there who rate her. Because they just look at that, oh, she beat Nunes thing, and not actually look at the fact that, well, she didn't take it seriously, clearly. And mm -hmm. um, in the second fight, she clearly showed what was up. But you can make a case that, yeah. like I said, it's worth beating her. At least to shut her up, because she's, she's somebody who's not going to stop talking shit. She'll be no, back she's not. Talking nonsense again. Yeah. So I like those matchups for both. Like I said, if I was Holly, I'd stick around for a bit. And if I was Harrison, you know, maybe maybe take take a 
take a little time out to beat up Pena real quick, and then then you've made yourself undeniable. And I think she, if Pennington's going to be out for six or seven months, which is looking possible, plenty of time to beat up Nunes in the meantime. She didn't get a scratch on her. Beat her up. Get her out of the picture. That's what yeah. I do. 